Welcome to the Sun River Angler's Fly Tying Corner for this month. We're going to tie a Pale Morning Dun Parachute. About September every year, I start thinking about the Crooked River and the Pale Morning Dun hatches that happen out there. They can be profuse and go on for hours. And this is a pattern I've used a lot on the Crooked for some epic days. To give you some perspective, here's a picture of a pale morning dun mayfly that we're trying to imitate. It's a very delicate uh, fly and relatively small. Size 16, maybe size 18 is typical. So I hope you'll give this one a try. And uh, September through early October is when the PMDs really come off well. So grab a three-weight rod and a box full of pale morning dun parachutes and head to the Crooked River. So let's review the materials for this pattern. I'll cover each material individually with a picture you, so you can see what, uh, what I'm using on this fly. For the hook, I'm going to use a Firehole 419 size 18. This mayfly is a small mayfly, so I'm going to go down in size, but I've chosen a, a 419 because it's a wide gape, and I can get better hooking on a wide gape hook when I get down this small. For the thread, I've got a Viva 16 aught in pale yellow. For the wing, I'm going to use some Zelon in a light dun that I get from Blue Ribbon Flies in Montana. For the tail, I've got some micro bats, and I use those in a light dun. For the abdomen, I'm going to use a turkey biot in pale yellow, but I use the trailing edge of the feather rather than the leading edge because I can get finer tighter wraps on this small hook. For the thorax, I've got a, gone a little unique here in that I'm using some fibers of his CDC feather and I dub those onto the thread as you'll see in the video. I use a pale yellow for these and I get mine from Trout Hunter Fly Shop in Island Park, Idaho. And lastly, for the hackle, I'm using a whiting dry fly saddle in light done. These are the best tackles in the world and I can't imagine using anything else for a parachute dry fly. Okay, I'm going to tie on my thread right at the two-thirds point of the hook and clip off the excess and then I'll move into placing the wing and I'm going to tie that in right at the right at that two-thirds point and tie down the butts good and then clip that off at a 45 degree angle so uh, I can have a nice tapered body. From here I've clipped off four micro bats and I'm gonna go ahead and measure them out against the hook clip off the excess and then I'm going to tie that in right behind the hump at the thorax. Tie all the way to the, the back of the hook and one wrap under the hook. Now I'm going to split this tail so I've got a, a very specific process to follow. I'm essentially going to figure eight the tail to split it with my real small 16 knot thread. Now that I've split the tail, I'm going to come back up to the wing and build a little bit of a bump of thread in front of the wing and then I'm going to post that wing to set it up right. And Zelon can be a little flyaway, so I'll do a little clipping and just clean up that wing.
Next, I'm going to clip off a biot from the trailing edge of a turkey wing. And I'll tie this in opaque side um, back and translucent side forward. And then I'll dab just a little bit of glue on the body. I like to tie this into a bed of glue. And you'll note I also just dab a touch of glue onto those microfibets on the tail so I can permanently seal those together and get a very nice clean split tail. So I'll wind the biot forward all the way to the uh, wing set position and get that nice segmentation in the body set up. Next, I'll tie in my hackle. I've stripped some barbs off the base of the hackle, and I'm going to tie this in with the shiny side facing up and dull side facing down. Some folks like to flip it the other way around, but I like the cup side down because I think it gives it a, a nice flotation effect for a parachute fly on the water. So I've taken my pale yellow CDC feather and I've stripped some barbs off the feather and clipped off the little nubby end because that's going to get in the way as I dub this. So I'll take these barbs and dub them onto the thread by spinning them and create a little yarn or a rope and I'll attach a few fibers to the fly, spin it tight, and then I'll go ahead and wind that through the thorax area and on up to the head. And I'll immediately follow on by beginning to wind my hackle. Now I like three to four winds on a parachute dry fly. And so I'll wind one wrap underneath the previous, underneath the previous, and then I'll tie it off right at the head and clip the excess. and I'll drop into a whip finish and push those fibers away from the hook as I'm winding so I don't capture them and I'll tie this off and clip the excess and then from here if I've got a fiber or two that got hung up in the eye I'll clip those off and do any final cleanup on this pattern and uh, and I'll have a finished pale morning done parachute. So let me rotate this around in the vise so you can see the top and bottom of the fly. Take a special notice to the underside profile of this pattern. I think it really imitates the natural quite nicely. So that has been your Sun River Anglers fly tying corner for this month. Give the pale morning done parachute a try, I think you'll like it. And if you like what you see, please subscribe to this page. And also check us out at, on Facebook at Sun River Anglers. Thanks for watching.